it's it's really just all about uh, perspective and uh, and the way that you view things, right? Like I think I grew up thinking that an entrepreneur, it, it kind of thinking about the actual abstract for this webinar, right? Where you think of uh, Mark Zuckerberg in a in a hoodie uh, in a college dormitory, right? And the reality is is that an entrepreneur is just somebody that views the world through a different lens and has the tenacity and, 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 and hunger to, to solve problems, right? And you can be an entrepreneur at a startup, you can be an entrepreneur at a law firm, you can be an entrepreneur in a, in, in a school district, right? And that entrepreneurial mindset and way of thinking is, is so important. And, and, and I hope people embrace that. And so, you know, I, I joke that the first phase of my career was my Ernest Hemingway wannabe phase. And it was because since I was a little kid, I've always loved telling stories. And that was the first way that I thought that you told stories by writing books or writing, you know, novels. And I had the opportunity to tell stories for people as a reporter. Uh, and I took that responsibility responsibility very seriously, right? When somebody opens up and gives you the chance to tell their story, uh, you, you, you do that with a certain level of, of respect. And, and then I realized, well, you know, companies are excellent vehicles uh, for people to achieve their dreams. You know, great companies create, uh, you know, great jobs. They create impact in the community. Uh, they can create generational wealth. And so I said, well, why can't I be the Ernest Hemingway of corporate storytelling, um, right? And so it was just having the confidence to look at, you know, the things that I did well in a different perspective made me realize that it wasn't as much of a leap as it may have looked like on paper. Uh, in my mind, it was just sort of the the next evolution of of who I was and 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 apply, applying it to a different challenge. Emily, what about you? Um, I think uh, in both the cases with place codes and startups, it's uh, kind of that like little aha moment of, oh, here's a gap that there's a need that hasn't been filled. Um, and like with place codes, there was, you could see it on, when you worked with clients, you could see it on a personal front. There was a gap of like, I wanna take advantage of this special Dunkin' Donuts Frappuccino, but I don't know where to go. And you, gee, you looked online and a lot of people didn't know where to go. And they're very frustrated by that. Oh, here's a gap. And can we find a way to fill that? Um, same with uh, stage two. There's a gap, you know. I, when you're a stage two, an older entrepreneur, there isn't a lot of support structures for you. You're kind of out there on your own. And I have to say, you know, when we were going through it, it would have been nice to have had something like stage two, where we could find other people like us to share. Um, our wins to ask help for where we didn't, you know, had uh, a failure, uh, to have some educational things to maybe help us sort ourselves out. But we felt, you know, we were really doing it on our own. So it was really um, great to say, oh, here's something that can fill a gap in the marketplace. There's a real need. There's a lot of people out there that could benefit it. And I knew that personally. And I think that um, really helps trigger the um that idea when you're having that personal pain point and then you can see more people are having that same pain so, i just um, want to jump in for a second because yes. i think one of the things that i think people um forget and it just emily just sort of crystallized it for me is whatever you're doing and i would say even if you're an entrepreneur right you're working inside as adam coffin was talking about what you're really doing as you create things is you're not trying to create something you're trying to solve someone's problem and if you think about it from their perspective not what you've done but what they're trying to fix then your opportunities for success are, are greater and it's so easy to fall into the trap of i've made this cool thing um you know, I've worked really hard. I've made this cool thing. Isn't it great? It's shiny. It's great. It's wonderful. Um, but unless you're talking about it in terms of, hey, you have this problem. 
I may have a solution for you. Can we talk? Kind of approach to things to stand in their shoes and understand the pain they're having. Because it might not seem like a pain unless you're in that world. But for those people, the problems that Emily and Adam were solving and, and the hopefully that we're solving are real pains for those people. And if you talk to them in those terms, they're much more likely to listen. 